So listen carefully as you do. And I will show you every step to take to cause you to be blessed, to cause you to go further than you've ever dreamed, to cause you to do things and operate in the gifts like you've never seen. Oh yes, saith the Lord, I will be with you and you will be with me. And you'll walk at every single day in absolute victory. So enter in, enter in, enter in, saith the Lord, and receive the goodness of your God, saith the Spirit of the Lord. Lift your hands and begin to worship Him. Begin to pray in tongues out loud. Shila bakoto do kushila. Tila manda da kotoda. Tila manda da koso de digidi bakoso. Todi ala manda da kishti ala manda da goda da bagode ala kishti. Kuyara baba kosom da da teste hi teste. Todi ala baba kosom da da hi histe. Hela gunda da mangi shinga da mango do do koso. Kuyara baba kosom da da ki ala goda da da ro sata. Kuyara baba kosom da da ki shila mambaka. Show us your glory. Say that out. Say that out loud with me. Show us your glory. Show us your glory, Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you, Father. We worship you, Father. I thank you for the blood. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. I thank you for the blood. I desire, Lord. I desire earnestly to prophesy. I desire your gifts. I desire your gifts. We worship you, Father. We worship you, Father. We worship you, Father. Hallelujah. When you see dark clouds beginning to form you know that it's going to rain because certain atmospheric conditions has caused the weather to change but you see as the body of Christ and as the church as a whole and each church combined must change the atmosphere and reach to the heavens and take hold you must change the atmosphere for, a fall, for the rain to fall, for the rain of God to be poured out, saith the Lord. The atmosphere comes is set from your heart as you allow him to draw near. So cast aside those weights that seem to bind you and those weights that hold you so close to the earth and lift your, <laughs> your spirit up and fly and fly and fly Hallelujah. and you will draw near to him and he will draw near to you and you will be blessed you will be blessed you will be blessed hallelujah praise the Lord glory to God we serve a good God don't we amen praise the Lord we serve a good God amen amen praise God well glory to God Glory to God. Hallelujah. Has someone injured their back? Recently. I mean, it might be a pull muscle. I don't know what it is. Anybody? Is that you? Okay, your back's been hurting all day. Well, that would probably qualify. So I'm going to come back there to you, okay? All right, praise the Lord. I need you to lift your hands to heaven. I'll look. Praise the Lord. Is it okay for me to lay my hands on you? Okay. Praise the Lord. I need you. How do you stand up, please, if you can. I will have. I want you to lay. Turn around here. I'm going to lay. 
have her lay his, your hand. Is that where it hurts? Huh? Where? Okay, her lower back. Okay, I'm going to lay my hands on top of her hands. Is that okay? Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There it goes. Right there. Right there. Thank you, Lord. Right? Uh, yeah. You do a little something you couldn't do before. Do a little something you couldn't do. Bigger, move around. Okay, is it still sore? Okay, well, we're we'll believing God is gone. What do you think about that? Hallelujah. Okay, well, Lord, I am. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord, our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. God is a good God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord God. Worthy is the Lord. Worthy is the Lord. Anxiety and trouble may come your way. But if you'll stay in the word every day, the fear will leave and the faith will come. You'll rise up strong. And you'll draw close, closer to God and closer to his son. And you'll meet the challenges of the day with victory and shout and a shout. <laughs> and all the fear that's within you will begin to come out. Faith will come in. Fear will go. Don't be afraid. God's in control. Hallelujah. Y'all give the Lord a clap. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. I desire earnestly to prophesy. You're healed. She got healed last night. She said she hadn't had to have her medicine. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Paul's no trouble. Well, God's a healer. Amen. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Say, worthy is the Lamb. Say it again. Worthy is the Lamb. He is so worthy. Amen. Glory to God. Well, y'all give the Lord a clap. Amen. You would just go ahead and start. Woo, hallelujah, Jesus. I need to know. I may have asked this before. Is all right if I turn my back on y'all just a minute and talk to them? Such an anointing on you guys tonight. And who's the oldest one up here? And how old are you? 22. 22. Anybody over 20 other than him? The rest are all teenagers. Who said that our teens were going to hell? God's got them marked. God's got a generation of young people marked. And they're going to bring revival and an awakening into the body of Christ. I believe that with all of my heart. Hallelujah. And then Pastor Jim last night hit it on the head when he said this generation, you know, you get that that anointing and that worship and then you get a few miracles happening in the place and you got something cooking then brother you got something cooking then how many y'all believe it? you got something stirring in the pot yes got some bones rattling I know some folks that need to fall on Elisha's bones how about y'all <laughs> Woo! hallelujah thank you Jesus Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to receive our offering. This offering in its entirety will go to our evangelist. How do you like being called the evangelist now instead of the pastor? You don't care what they call you, right? As long as they call you to eat. <laughs> Dr. Jim McCann, and so once you, if you're making a check out, you can make your check out to RCF, and we'll make one check tomorrow, and uh, 
If you need an envelope, if you're giving cash and would like credit for it, if you'll hold your hand up, we'll have an usher get you an envelope. Anybody need an envelope tonight? Okay, right over here, Brother Thomas. Amen. Anybody else need an envelope? All right. Thank you so much. Well, last night, last night was awesome, wasn't it? Last night was awesome. Now, I know Sylvia, you've already mentioned, but Sylvia said that she's been taking pills for 20 years for acid reflux. She didn't take any today, though, did you, sister? Have you had any problem? No problem all day long. Hallelujah. Because he called that out last night. You see, he called that out. And then Paul also uh, told me he hadn't had any trouble all day long. I asked him last night how he felt. He said, well, I'll know in the morning after I eat. <laughs> but he hadn't had any trouble. When God heals, he heals, doesn't he, brother? When God heals, he heals. And so I'm sure there are other testimonies, and there will be more testimonies of what God is doing. All right, everybody's, I see people still writing, so I'm kind of delaying just a little bit, make sure everybody's got, got a minute to, to do what you need to do. Would you stand with me, please, all over the building? Robbie, would you put up, sir, our offering confession? We're going to do that tonight, and we're going to say it together, and uh, you can look at either screen, and don't say it after me, say it with me, okay? Say it with me. So everybody, get your offering, hold it up like this, and here we go. Father God, giver of every good and perfect gift, I'm excited and thankful to bring my tithe and offering to you today. Thank you for redeeming me once and for all from the curse of the law and faithfully supplying every need of my life. By faith, I know that you will receive this tithe and offering and use it to continue unveiling the beauty of Jesus through the RCF family. And of course, this is an offering. Would you just come, put your offering in these baskets on these two altars, and we would uh, appreciate it. You guys can play something or sing something, whatever you want to do. Go right ahead. Nothing like being uh, used to in season, out of season. So go ahead. Rick, put this on. I'm just apt to walk out in the crowd at any time, you know, so y'all just ignore me. Good to have the Gorses with us tonight. He's the pastor of Mulberry River Mission. There you go. I knew it was Mulberry, Mulberry Hills River Mission, a church there in Mulberry Hills that they've just started in, in the last few months and about a year, okay? And uh, Brother Bill and I have been talking back and forth, and, and uh, we want to hook up and help them because I tell you what, if any place needs needs a church and needs deliverance it's Mulberry Hills Amen. Amen It's Mulberry Hills and if, you, if you're from around here and you know anything about Mulberry Hills you know the problem they have there with drugs and so on and so forth But so brother you're, you're in the seat of Satan but so was the Apostle Paul right <laughs> and you can do it as God blesses you Good to have Bob and Lola Beard tonight. Uh, they were with us last night, and Bob and Lola, uh, they have a ministry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have Bob stand just a minute. I, I like to put him on the spot. <laughs> this, is, this is a great guy right here, and, and uh, we've uh, come to love Bob and Lola. Uh, one time, uh, a lady in, in the church told my wife when we was pastoring a mobile, she said, I've just learned to love you. And Angela said, well, was it that hard? <laughs> So, share with us what y'all's ministry is all about. All right. We, uh, God's just blessed us in, with having Freedom to Soar Ministries, and it's a deliverance ministry. And God knows that that's what we need in the church today, not just outside, but inside. And God is setting people free that's been held back by the enemy for so long. He's just setting them free. And it's fun to see the excitement on people's faces when all of a sudden that truth encounter comes and they understand what God has been trying to tell us all along. He's setting us free. He set me free from so many things that caused havoc in my wife's life and now she's free, I'm free and we're all free and God wants us all to be free. Amen. Can I just, can I just, I know you bragged on your young people, but young folks, 
Y'all are going to be going out and setting the captives free. You will be doing that, not just in song, but in deed. You're going to be out there laying hands on people and seeing them delivered and seeing them set free. Y'all have a unique opportunity, and we're excited to see what God's doing in you, but he's also doing it in us old 66-year-old folks too, okay? He's doing it in all of us. He loves us, and he wants us to do and share the love of God. Amen. Boy, I tell you what, you're free, I'm free, we're all free. <laughs> Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, you're free, I'm free, and we're all free. This is my finger-licking little girl right here. She, while I go, she is licking her fingers. And I said, did you have Kentucky Fried Chicken tonight? Oh, it was this one. Ah, see, I was like the wrong one. She was sitting there, though. Wasn't she sitting right there? You're the finger-licking good girl, right? Amen. Oh, boy. What did you do to your finger? You heard it. Like a fan? Oh, you're just playing today and hurt your finger. Well, I gotta know one thing. When you licked it, did it make it feel better? It didn't. Okay. <laughs> it didn't make it feel any better. How many of y'all have ever hit your thumb with a hammer? How many of you cussed when you did it? Don't raise your hand. I tricked you there, didn't I? <laughs> but how many of you after, uh, you know, when you, when, you, when you hit your thumb with a hammer, you know the Bible says we're to love all the members of the body of Christ, right? But when somebody offends us, what do we do? Most of the time we just, we talk about them, we hit on them, we do all this kind of stuff, you know. But when you hit your thumb with a hammer, how many of y'all, after you cussed, you grab it like this and you hold it, clasp it together, and you might even draw it close to you. And you're going, oh, man, I can't believe that. It hurts so bad. And you begin to pray. And, but you got that thumb clasped in the comfort of your other hand. Did you know when somebody offends you in the body of Christ, if you would clasp them and begin to hold them and pray for them, you'd be surprised what that'll do. That'll set you free, them free, and all of us free. But I think that sometimes, you know, I've never seen anybody hit their thumb and do this. <laughs> Did y'all ever do that? Then why do we treat one another like that? The body fitly joined together. Amen. I got a special gift for oh, no. Dr. McCann tonight, and it, it fits in my shirt pocket, if that tells you anything. It's keys to an F-150. Come here. It's not the keys to an F-150. You better go back to the prayer closet. <laughs> Matter of fact, I don't even know what you're going to do with this, but it's going to be funny to see the look on your face. Now, how many of y'all know that we're in a mask-wearing society now? Everywhere you go, got to have a mask. Well, I found a really special mask for Dr. McCann. It's even camouflaged, but it has a razor back on the front of it. You, you do, you, uh, you know, I, I feel like I need to clasp you right now. Like you. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a lot of people I've wanted to clasp. Do y'all see that razor back on there? <laughs> What is that sign for? That's that's for the hogs, brother. Well, who's the hog? The Arkansas Razorbacks. What you do mean y'all got a football team? Yes, sir. I didn't think they had a football team. Now then, how <laughs> many of y'all think? Just this way how many of y'all think that he will ever wear it? No. <laughs> no. Now, if you get something with the crimson tide across it, that's for winners. Brother, that, that, See, I'm a winner. I'm not you, a loser, you, son. You can find crimson tide stuff all over this state. Well, now, why come you but think you can't find novel. that? This is enough <laughs> because we're in Alabama. <laughs> but next time you out in the woods. I'll hang it up and use it for target practice. You just remember that a very good friend of yours gave you a hog. A hog. <laughs> Well, I appreciate the Arkansas. I don't expect you to have to wear it, okay? No, I'm going to hang it up and shoot at it. <laughs> I can set my scope with that. 
100 yards. <laughs> Y'all give Dr. Jim McCann a great big hand clap. Come Amen. on, brother. Let's worship. Let's pray. Glory let's to God. Amen. Do you love the Lord? Amen. Amen. God's a good God. I was listening to the brother back there talking to these young people about deliverance. And over the years, we've seen quite a bit of that. And I've been up. And I remember years ago, understand that it takes the anointing of God to deliver. Okay, you have to walk in the anointing of God. Um,
we've been, say this with me. Say that one more time. We're going to make our confession of faith, all right? One more time. We'll let you sit down. Say this with me. I'm a doer of the word of God. And not here only. I have an alert mind, a receptive spirit, and attentive heart. I have active faith. I have active faith. I know that God has something for me tonight, and I will not leave without it. I know if I will do it, it will change my life forever. All right, y'all give the Lord a clap. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Now, we've been talking about the power of God, the healing power of God. We said last night, catch you, if you were not here, I'm going to catch you. I'm just going to briefly give you an uh, overview of what we covered. We said the greatest hindrance to people today in receiving healing for their body is not knowing it's the will of God to heal you now. Say, heal me now. You know, many people have a, a, a wrong conception of what the will of God is. To many people, the will of God has been a deep, dark shadow on their, on their pathway in life, blocking out all light, uh, all present blessings of God. To many people, you know, all they can think about is when they think of the will of God in their lives. It, it, it's a terrible presence with, uh, with cold, cruel hands with which they have pleaded uh, night and day to be released from. To many people, the will of God is associated with sick rooms and hospitals and poverty and loss and bereavement, funerals, the open grave. To many people, uh, the will of God is always negative. Say negative. The only time that they think about the will of God is when, when some calamity passes within their lives. But I'm here to tell you tonight, as I told you last night, that we serve a good God. Say a good God. Say I serve a good God. That the will of God is not, is not uh, a, 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 a poverty. It is not sickness and disease. No, we serve a God of light and goodness and power. Somebody say amen. The, uh, you know, the will of God is that God wants you blessed coming, and God wants you blessed going. He wants you to be the head and not the tail. He wants you walking in victory every day of your life. Hallelujah. He's not out to get you. He's out to bless you. Somebody shout tonight. No, sickness is of the devil. Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Sickness is satanic oppression. The woman bowled over for 18 years. He said, ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, a daughter of Abraham, she, meaning she had a covenant with God that said, I will take sickness and disease away from the midst of thee, and the number of thy days I will fulfill. She had a covenant, and she said, he said, ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham be loose from this infirmity she had been bound whom Satan hath bound lo these 18 years satanic bondage it's not the will of God it is blessed be God straight from the pit of hell hallelujah somebody shout tonight God is a good God say God is a good God we said this we read uh, 2 Timothy 3.16, all scriptures are given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God and the woman of God may be perfect or complete, thoroughly furnished under, every, uh, under every, all good works. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, we said this. We're talking about the doctrine of healing. We said there are two areas that we need to always... Uh, you know, focus on, that's number one, say producing faith. And number two, releasing faith. Because, you know, you can have a whole heart full of faith and not get healed. You can have a whole heart full of faith and sit around and do nothing for God or yourself or anybody else. You got to learn how to release your faith. Mark 11, 20, 22, 23, and 24, Jesus said, have faith in God or have the God kind of faith. And he would have told you to have something you couldn't have. You could have the God kind of faith. As a matter of fact, you've got the God kind of faith when you got born again. The Bible says God has dealt to every man, every man among you, every Christian, a measure of the God, the measure of the God kind of faith. Now it's up to you to increase it. You can increase your faith. There's all kind of faith spoken of in the Bible. Ever increasing faith. There's all kind of faith. Great faith. Weak faith. Unfeigned faith. All kind of faith spoken of in the Bible. But, God, but you're the one that has to do it. God's not going to do it. 
You have to do it. Now listen to me. It says, Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he said. Therefore I say unto you, Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Now listen to me. If you look at that and study that, you'll see that Jesus said, Believing one time, faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the what kind of word? What, what? Hearing by the what? What kind of word? Logos or rhema? The spoken word of God. Three, he said, if you'll notice, there's, he, there's one time he talks about belief. It's not, he, it's not hard to get, honestly, if you, you go to a good church, it teaches the word of faith and the move of the Holy Ghost. Most Christians believe. They believe. But they don't know how to release it. And he said, if you'll notice, he said the word say three times. I remember my, uh, my spiritual father, he laid hands on me, he sent me into the ministry, Dr. Kenneth E. Hagan. He said, he's, he taught us, he said that God revealed that to him and said God told him that you're going to have to do three times as much of teaching on how to release faith by them speaking the word of God over their lives than them believing because most people believe. So you've got to not only produce faith in your life, but you've got to know how to release your faith. Somebody say amen. amen. See, too many people are so natural-minded that, you know, that, that they, can't, uh, they get so caught up, especially in the world that we're living in right now. Yeah, there's so much going on. There's so many voices in the world today that you don't, people don't even want to take time to hear from God. Right. You've got to take time to hear from God. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. All right. All right. Glory to God. Say I'm blessed. All right, I'm going to jump ahead here, I'm, you know, because I know we've got a lot to cover tonight, and I, I've got a tremendous amount to cover. All right, we said this, uh, you know, uh, we must build a faith, a word weaponry arsenal. A, 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 we must build a faith within our lives. We must build a word or, or a weaponry arsenal. We told you that 12 of the 19 cases of Jesus ministering, uh, 12 of them uh, were over the people's faith and not just the, the power of God. Would that be the case, then we need to learn to develop our faith and to release our faith. Is that true? Sure it is. Glory to God. But understand, when you understand, and I talked about the Word of God being seed, that the life of the seed that's in itself, you, do, you don't get healing. you got to plant seed into your heart. Such is the kingdom of God as if a man should plant seed into the ground. you got to plant the right kind of seed into your heart. you got to plant healing seed if you want healing. you got to plant prosperity seed if you want prosperity. Somebody say amen. If a church wants to prosper, they're going to have to teach their people how to prosper. <laughs> That's it. Somebody say amen. If you, want, if, you want to, if you want to operate in the power of God, somebody says, well, you know, we don't ever have signs and wonders around our church. You know how come that is? Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you don't teach on signs and wonders, if you don't teach on healing, if you don't teach on the things of God that bring miracles and signs and wonders, you're not going to have it because people won't have the faith to do it. Amen. Listen to me. Jesus gave us, any carpenters in here? Anybody ever did any carpentry? Okay, I know Rick, yeah. Okay, Rick, let me ask you a question. You know what I'm going to say because you heard me preach this before. I'm going to build some trusses. I mean, I'm going to cut some trusses. And you're the master carpenter. <laughs> He'd knock me across the room if I did this. Anyway, they bring in a, a pallet of two by fours. And you walk out there, and I'm your apprentice, just fresh, you know, young and stupid. Okay. And so I get out there, and, and you lay it out, you know, and. Here's where I want you to cut it right there. And this is your pattern. You cut this and cut my pattern for me. Okay. You know, 45 degree angle. All I want you to do here, son, just cut them. So I got this big stack of lumber. Ring, 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 you know. And pretty soon I get tired of moving that board back and forth. So you know what? It would be much easier if I just use that top one as the pattern. So I cut it and I move it. I just cut the next one. Well, I get through really quick, and Rick's impressed. Man, he really got through with that pretty quick. So he starts putting up the trusses. About two days, he gets back, and he looks down that building, and that house, and it's starting to go. He said, Jim, get over here. Now, what happened? 
Every time I didn't stick to the pattern, the blueprint that he gave me, the master carpenter, I lost an eighth of an inch. And over time, it got all goofed up. Now listen to me. Jesus gave us the pattern in Mark 16, 16. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And, the, and he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. In my name they shall speak with other tongues. In my name uh, they shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. But you see, over the years, we've left that out. And we say, oh, we don't want to run anybody out. Oh, man, we got to build a crowd. We don't want to have that. And therefore, you got to power this church. Why? Because they left the pattern. you got to stay with the pattern. you got to stay with the move of God and the power of the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. You cannot. It is the pattern of Jesus Christ. It is the outline of God. And when you get back to the pattern, glory to God, you're going to have signs and wonders. Somebody shout tonight. you got to want it. But no, we got seeker-sensitive churches that can you don't, you don't even use the word, they teach them this, don't even use the word tongues from the pulpit. We don't, we don't lay hands on the sick around here. We don't only let them pray the, in tongues in their prayer closets, I mean in, their, in the prayer groups, because I know for a fact, because I had somebody go to one of them and they stopped him from doing it, so we don't do that around here. And that's why they don't have signs and wonders. See, you're not going to have one unless you preach it. And what you're going to produce, you're going to produce a big old business. Great big business. And you're going to hire people to run it. You're going to hire good business people. It's going to be very successful. But you know, God didn't tell us we're leaving the pattern. God didn't tell you to go out and hire business people to run your church. He said you the fivefold ministry is to run the church. Because I anointed the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, and the pastor, and the teacher to run the church. Nobody else. Y'all give the Lord a clap. Amen. That's the truth. You're old fashioned. No, I'm old and New Testament. Glory to God. All right. We said this. We looked at Matthew. Oh, I got to get on here. All right. We said this. The number one reason that people, <laughs> do not, I may do it, do not receive healing is that they are not certain. It's where we left off. That it is God's will to heal. I always remember, faith begins where the will of God is known. All right. All right, now, did you know how you, can, how you can tell whether you believe the Word of God that you're hearing tonight or not? And I can see it, you know, over the years, I, I've pastored over 35 years, if I count all the ministry time that I did on the road and so forth, and, uh, and working in different areas of ministry, I've been in the ministry 40 years. But you know how you can tell you believe the Word of God? There's a rule of thumb. If the Word of God is old to you, then it's not real to you. But if it's real to you, it never grows old. Amen. You see, most, you, you got to understand, people must know it is God's will to heal. The only way to know it is to get into it. Somebody say amen. amen. See, the key to gaining understanding and faith from any of God's word is to hear it like every time, like you've never heard it before. Somebody say Amen. See, when you say, well, I've heard that preacher preach on, you know, <laughs> you know I, I, Mark 11, 22, 23, 24, you know, uh, whosoever shall say, doubt not in his heart, but shall believe those things which you say, it shall come to pass, shall have ever whatever he says. Get up, oh God, I've heard that before. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, who is on self by our sin that is on body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you're healed. 1 Peter 2, 24, preaching on healing, the Lord to God, pray, pastor. Uh, you know, he's preaching on healing again. Or, oh no, here we go. Not again. I've heard this again. Hear me, I'm going to have to hear it again. Pastor is doing it again. Why does he keep doing this? 
Listen to me. If you say, I've heard it before, what you're doing, instantly you shut the door to further revelation. Did you hear that? Because there are things in these scriptures that we still haven't heard yet. Why? Because the word of God is eternal. It is alive. It is light. The light of God. And the light never goes out. And revelation, listen to me, revelation is always progressive. God will always show you more and more because the word of God is eternal. Glory to God. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God will never pass away. Hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord a shout tonight. And I'm going to give you several reasons why infallible proofs, say infallible proofs. I'm probably not going to get past the first two. But I've got close to 30. All right. I'm going to give you infallible proofs and reasons why we are sure, absolutely sure, that it is God's will to heal you today. And I'm going to show you what the Word of God says, not what some opinion is. I'm going to show you what the Word of God says about the situation. I'm going to show you, and you'll be thoroughly furnished and ready to answer any man or any woman and tell them with confidence, it is God's will for me to be healed and for me to be blessed Amen. according to the Word of God. Now, these scriptural proofs are, are, are designed to cause one's heart to be so fully persuaded of God's will to heal them that at any suggestion otherwise will be immediately and totally rejected. See, if you get enough of the Word of God in your heart, I don't care who comes peddling their doubt. Listen to me. You, the Word of God will drive it away from you. Amen. I know Dad used to say this. Am I too loud? Is this too loud? Okay. Dad, that's Kenneth Hagin. Dad used to say, too many Christians have slop buckets for ears. You young people don't know what a slop bucket is. I guarantee you they don't know what a slop bucket is. My granddaddy, you know, he, he, of course, my granddaddy was a farmer. You know, he, he raised dogs, cows, I mean, everything, you know. And uh, he, he, grand, well, he had a slop bucket out in the back. That slop bucket was to feed his dogs. Whether you ate, you threw the slop out there. Or to the hogs, one or the other. Somebody say amen. 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 Now we call them leftovers. <laughs> Glory to God. But anyway. But see, too many people allow just anything to go in their ears. Too many people let anything, just like just allow anything to go in there. They listen to anything. Let me tell you something. Somebody said, well, I listen to the Word of God today. I mean, I listen to this so-and-so teach, and I listen to so-and-so teach, and I listen to so-and-so teach. Listen to me. If I need, if I want a good bone-in ribeye, yeah, I like bone-in ribeyes, about two inches thick, I feel the presence of the Holy Ghost. No. <laughs> I'm not going to go to the bakery to find it. Or McDonald's. Yeah, a lot of people go into McDonald's once a week. See, the Word of God, like food, <laughs> Word of God is to your spirit as food is to your body. And some people are only getting one meal a week. And some of, them, some of them ain't even getting that. They're getting a McDonald's fish on a bun. And they expect, you know, they're going to be, oh, hallelujah, I'm going to flow in the power of the Holy Ghost. God's going to use me. God, no, he's not. Not until, you, not until you surrender to him. And how do you surrender to him? Surrender to his word. You've got to fill yourself with the word of God. The Word of God is the power of God unto what? Salvation. The word is soteria in the Greek. I'm going, I'm going, I'm just, y'all, I'm just going to follow the Holy Ghost. Somebody say amen. The power of God unto salvation. The word is soteria. And it implies the ideas of deliverance, safety, soundness of heart, soundness of mind. It's the all-inclusive word of the gospel. And you see, if you don't fill yourself with the power of God, you're, when you do, you, you want to walk in that? You want that to be in your life? Do you want... Soundness of heart, soundness of mind, prosperity, the anointing of God, the power of God, the all-inclusive. That means everything in the Bible. It includes everything in the Bible. The anointing, the power of the Spirit. All of it. All-inclusive. All-inclusive. And you expect to walk in the power of God. And all you know is John 3.16. It's not going to happen. 
Why do you read the word of God? And then Jesus said, if you could, Jesus, if you continue, if, conditional, if you continue in my word. Now listen, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. People run around saying, hallelujah, the truth's going to set you free. The truth's going to set you. That's not what it says. The truth's going to make you free. It don't say that either. It said, if you continue in it, then are you my disciplined ones. Disciple means disciplined ones indeed. I trained in the martial arts for over 30 years. In 2008, I was inducted into the Martial Arts Hall of Fame. I trained under a, a, a Japanese instructor by the name of Hito Yukikoda. His son was the, the, one of the first the, the Power Rangers, you know. He actually just won a, uh, his other brother, his, other, his, his brother, David's brother, Hito, just won an award. He's the stunt director for Stranger Things out in California. Anyway, side note. But uh, anyways, I trained under Master Hito Yukikoda. I've also trained under other arts. I've trained in many, many arts. Shiritu Taijutsu, Stolu Yoshikai. I mean, uh, Buddha Sin Jiu Jitsu, Yoshu Sunni Jiu Jitsu. I've trained in all kinds of arts over the years. And I trained so much when I was a young man, especially. I, can't, I began to become like my teacher, my sensei. See, that's what you want. You want to become, as you continue in it, like your teacher. You want to be good as your, or try to be good as your teacher. And the only way to do that is to discipline yourself. Every day, every day, every day, every day, training, every day, if you want to be the best. Now, there's people that want to come in. I've seen all these little kids over the years. I had, you know, schools for years. These young people come in. Not only young people. They think they're going to they watch too many kung fu movies. They come in and they think overnight they're going to be a, you know, karate kid. They come in there and lift their hands, their hands up like karate kids, you know. And I'm, <laughs> I get them out there. I make them punch, 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 punch. All they do, punch, punch. Wax home. Remember the wax home? Wax home. No, wax home. Wax home. Yeah. Punch, punch. And they start, <laughs> they start crying. Why? They don't, why we do this? No, my, way, my mama, I don't want to do this. I'm not chopping down trees yet. What am I doing? Discipline, but I'm also only thing that will make only thing that will create muscle memory is discipline. And so you do one thing thousands and thousands and thousands of times. So that when something grabs you, you just respond, and I've done it before, and I don't even know how I've done it. I don't know they're laying on the floor. I don't even know what it did. Okay, all I know is, oops. Well, you see, you've got to continue. See, I continued in his teaching. If you continue in my word, Jesus said, and become a disciple one indeed, then you will know the truth or how to do it. And the truth that you know and you continue in is going to make you free. And you're going to become a little Christ, like Christ, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. We are to portray Christ, the anointed one. Somebody say amen. 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 That's the only way you're ever going to walk in the power of God is to continue in the word of God. You've got to build up a word weaponry arsenal so that when Satan comes against you, you have spiritual muscle memory and you just respond and he goes and he flees from you. Hallelujah. The Bible says... Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Somebody shout tonight. All right. I got to get started. Genesis 1, We are sure. I'm going to get this one in. I am. No, this is me. I'm saying to me. I am going to get number one and number two in right here. On, uh, number one on, 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 on infallible proofs. Tonight. Amen. Do you agree with me? Yes. 
Glory to God. Turn if, <laughs> Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. All right. And God said, let us make man in our image. Let us make man. Let us. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost said, let us make man in our image. That's the Holy Trinity. And after our likeness. So we were made in the image and the likeness of God. Are you listening to me? God is a spirit. We are, what, how is that? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. He is a tripart being. God is a tripart being. We are a tripart being. We are, we are a spirit. You are a spirit. You don't have a spirit. You are a spirit. You have a soul, which is your mind, will, and emotions, and you live in a body. We were made in the, the likeness, in the image of God. God is a spirit. You are a spirit. That's how, in his likeness. Mind, will, and emotion leads you. Is that right? Well, that's the Holy Ghost. He leads and guides you into all truth. You are a body. Jesus Christ became flesh and dwelt among us. You were made in the likeness and image of God. Somebody say amen. amen. Did you understand that? Amen. Say I understand. All right. Genesis 1, 26. Let us make man in our image and after our likeness, and let us have dominion over the over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Say, I have, I have dominion, dominion over creeps. Over creeps. <laughs> so God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God cursed them. Is that what it says? God made them poor. Is that what it says? And God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful to multiply and replenish. Well, I could really meddle on that. Replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over everything that creepeth uh, or moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb-bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth and every tree in which is the fruit of, the, of a tree, yielding seed to you it shall be for meat. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life. I have given every herb, green herb, for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. What was it? And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Now, notice something here. Notice that God made man in his own image, all right? Now look at verse 31 again. And God saw that everything that he had made, and he said, Behold, it is very good. Say, it is very good. Now notice that God made man in his image. And when he got through, he said, It was very good. Amen. Now is God perfect or does God have flaws? Now, is that right? God is perfect. So God made the first man, Adam, after his own image. So before the fall, man was perfect. Is that right? God made man perfect. Now that means that his mind was perfect and not full of emotional problems. Is that right? He wasn't bound by sickness or disease, nor did he have some kind of other, you know, some kind of malady in his life. When you looked at man, you had a perfect being. God made man the way he wanted him to be. Is that right? I'm going to say that again. I'm going to say that again. God made man the way he wanted him to be. You could say it this way, that it was God's will. Or it was God's perfect will for the first man to be perfect in body, perfect in mind, and perfect in spirit. No disease, no sickness, no nothing binding him. Is that right? Amen. See, if God wanted man or desired man to be sick and have some type of disease in his body, if, God, uh, if it was God's will for his man to be sick, then he would have built sickness into him and would have made him sick and built it right in there. But he didn't do that, now did he? He didn't want him sick. You know, he didn't want, the Bible says, in other words, he did not want him or desire him that way. It was not his will for man to be sick and bound by the powers of darkness. Now let me ask you a question. Can I get a, a napkin, please? I'm melting. I should have brought, forgot my handkerchief. Thank you. 
Now, let me ask you a question. How many here know, thank you, handkerchief, glory to God, I'm asking you, shall we say? How many know that God never changes? Is that right? Does God ever change? The Bible tells us in Hebrews 13, 8, I believe it is, Hebrews 13, 8, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Is that true? The Bible tells us in Malachi 3, 6, it says, I am the Lord, what? I change not. Say, I change not. He says, I am the Lord. I change not. So if, so if God wanted man uh, perfect in spirit, soul, and body, then, and he doesn't change, then he still wants him a perfect spirit, soul, and body today. Is that true? That's right. God made his man the way he wanted him to be and, and the way he desired for his man to be. And that way has never changed because he never changes. I'm going to kill that sacred cow right now, real quick. Turn over to my, um, I don't think I'm, I may have it. I may have given it to them. Uh, Matthew 8. Can I take time to show you this? Oh, I love it. I love preaching the word. I love it. Glory to God. Matthew chapter 8. Uh, let's just start at verse 1. When he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper <laughs> and worshiped him, saying, Lord, if it is your will, you can make me clean or heal me. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will not. And his nose fell off into his soup. Is that what it says? Does it say that? No, no, not my Bible either. Now, let's look at it again. And he put, did you know there's nowhere in the Bible that Jesus ever said it wasn't his will? Nowhere. Now, notice again. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will. One translation says, sure, I will. Actually, that's what it says. I will be thou clean. And immediately, his leprosy was cleansed. All right? Now, one more scripture. Romans 2.11 says this. I'll just quote it. For there is no respect of persons with God. Now let me ask you a question. We have already established in Hebrews 13, 8 that God never changes. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Is that true? Malachi 3, 6, I am the Lord, I change not. So if I go up to Jesus in prayer and say, Jesus, it is, is it your will to heal me? And he says, no. Then he becomes a respecter of persons and he has changed. This right here should answer the healing question forever. If he said, it is your will, Lord, he, when he asked, said, Lord, if it's your will to heal me, he said, I will. And when you go to God, let me tell you something. He says, I will. Be thou clean. Glory to God. Give the Lord a clap. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Well, pastor, I don't know about that. God, won't, you know, how do you know that God wants his man well? I mean, how... Pastor, uh, if God wants his uh, a man well, then why is there so many people sick? Well, I could ask the same question. If God wanted uh, everybody saved, and he does, then why are there so many people still going to hell? Well, let's just go on and just look at Let's answer the question. Okay, Pastor, or Brother Jim. If it's God's will, uh, if, it's, if it, God wants man well, then why is so many Sick. Well, let's just answer the question. Romans 5, 12 says this. Wherefore, as, as by one man sin, speaking of Adam, sin entered the world. And death, notice that, by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sin. Now, why is there death in the world, according to Romans 5, 12? Because of sin. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Now understand something. Sickness and disease is what is called or is known as incipient death. Say incipient death. Or death in the beginning stages. In other words, if you get enough sickness in your body, you're going to go be with Jesus. I hope. That's where you're going to go. Amen. Amen. You know, when we actually, if you look at the scriptures, and now listen to me, when you look at the scriptures, you're going to see that when it talks about, you know, when we think about death, most people, when they think about death, they think about physical death. But in the scriptures, there's a whole lot of different types of, 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 of death. You know, people, there's people that you know and I know that are walking around alive, but they're spiritually dead. 
You listening to me? Say, I'm listening, Pastor. All right. You know, uh, you know, they're spiritually dead, which means separation from God. So you can be walking around and be spiritually dead. Now listen to me. And sickness and disease is a manifestation of death in our physical body. You follow me on this? Just like poverty is a manifestation of death in our finances. Just like confusion, perplexity, anxiety, depression is a manifestation of death in our mind, our soul realm, in other words. Uh, you know, uh, that, that is incipient death, death in beginning stages. See, death is more than just physical. Now, why is there death in, in, you know, in the world today? Because of sin. Who sinned? Adam. And we were in Adam. And the, but that's why the Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God because we were in Adam. Say, I'm listening. The reason there is sickness and disease and death in the world today is because Adam, man, bowed his knee to the devil. He committed high treason, so it is man's fault. Yes, Satan is the author, author and the perpetuator of sickness and disease, but he couldn't have got it done if Adam had not bowed his knee to him and given him place. That's why we're not to give place to the devil. Amen. So it's not God's fault, so don't blame God. But man is man's fault. And Satan is the author, author and the perpetuator of it. Now think about it. In studying the book of Genesis, in the days of creation, which days did God create cancer? Which day did he create the COVID? None of them. That was created in China in Wuhan, in a, in a lab. Did he create tuberculosis on the first day, second day, third day? No, he didn't. But now when he got through, he looked at all that he created, and what did he say? Behold, it is what? Very what? Very good. Can you look at someone with heart disease and say, behold, it is very good? Can you look at a child who's dying with cancer? And say, behold, it is very good. See, God did not create sickness and disease, and sickness and disease is not a part of God's original creation. It came as a result of the fall of man. It came as a result of sin. Alexander Dowie said that sickness is the foul offspring of his father and his mother, the devil. Amen. And it is. Amen. God made his man the way he wanted him to be. Perfect spirit, soul, and body. And that has never changed. Amen. He wants him that way today. Think about try to Try to imagine Adam getting up sick in the Garden of Eden. I don't think that's, they ever had to do that. You know, Adam and Eve, think about this, had no concept of sickness and disease and weakness. It never occurred to them. Why? Because it was evil. Say evil. evil. They had no knowledge of evil. Say evil. evil. I believe it's in Leviticus. It calls sickness an evil disease of Belial or Satan. He said an evil disease of Belial cleave it to his flesh. Say sickness is evil. See, they did not understand the magnitude of, of sin or what they didn't understand that because they had no knowledge of evil. That's why God said, if you take from the fruit of the knowledge of good and what? Evil. In that day you will die. The Hebrew is, in that day you will, in dying, you will die. You will die spiritually and you will begin to die physically. He said, in the day that you eat thereof. He said, when you take the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, in that day you will die. And when God, listen to me, when God tells you to do something, even if you don't understand it, you don't do it. See, God didn't tell them not to sin so it would spoil their fun and spoil their party. He told them not to sin because it would eventually kill them. God didn't tell them not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil because he was going to spoil the party. He done it because he didn't want them to die. 
Now listen to me. God designed man perfect. It is not God's will to be sick because of the original creation. Listen to me. God loves sick people, but he hates sin. I mean, he hates sickness. God loves sinners, but he hates sin. The reason God hates, listen to me, church. The reason God hates sickness and disease is because when man fell, he was created in his what? Own image. When man fell, the man who he loved, the man which took the greatest, was his greatest creation, the man who was created in the likeness and image of God began to become twisted and began to die through age, through sickness and disease. Listen to me. And God hated it. God hates it because we are the very beings that are to betray his magnificence. We are the very beings that are betray his beauty. We are the very beings that he is called and anointed to carry his anointing, to set the captives free. That's why he hates it. He don't want you bound. He wants you up preaching the gospel. Glory to God. Somebody shout tonight. So we are sure it is God's will to heal all today because of God's original creation. I don't have a watch. <laughs> one more. Can I go one more? All right. Glory to God. I love it because it set me free. I'm telling you, this message of faith will set you free. Listen to me. Listen to me. It taught me how to be a father. It taught me how to be a, a champion. It taught me how the best be God to tread upon lions and adders. Glory to God. The powers of darkness. If you get a hold of the word of God, you'll be a victor. No matter what comes against you, you'll overcome if you apply the word of God. No matter what you stand against, you can slay your giants through the word of God. Glory to God. Somebody shout tonight. Number two, <laughs> we are sure it is God's will to heal all today because of God's will revealed in heaven. Say, God's will revealed in heaven. I know I got it around there somewhere. There it is. All right. All right, there it is. Revelations, chapter 21, verse 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall not be no more death, there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall be there any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Revelations 22, 1 through 3. Say, this is the word. You understand for something to be scriptural, there has to be scripture, right? right. All right. Revelations, have I, have I been giving you scripture? Yes. Okay. Revelations 22, 1 through 3. And God showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. And there was a man fishing out of it by the name of Dr. Jim McCann. In the, I'm going to fish in that when I get up there, glory to God. All right. And in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, and bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Notice this. And there shall be no more curse. Yeah, we get excited about that, don't we? What does Galatians 3, 13 and 14 say? Christ has, hath, hath already done, redeemed you from the curse. Amen. Right. Let's read on. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and the servants and his servants shall serve him. Now, within these scriptures, we see the will of God concerning healing in heaven, don't we? We see no more curse, no more death, no sorrow, no more crying, no sadness, no sickness, no disease, no pain. You can go up to anybody, any Christian on the face of the earth, you know, and ask them, is it God's will for me to be sick in heaven? And they'll say, well, of course not. I mean, they'll say, why? Well, it's not God's will for you, but anybody to be sick in heaven, the Bible plainly says, no more death, 
No more sorrow, no more pain. So that means, what does that mean? That means in heaven, there's going to be no death, no sorrow, no pain, no sickness, no disease. Is that right? But if you ask, depending on what person you ask, depending upon what group you ask, if you ask someone and say, well, is it God's will for me to be healed now? They say, oh, no, brother. No, brother, the healing was done away with the apostles. You just hang on to the end. The devil's going to beat your eyes out, and God's going to help him. But one day you're going to die, and when we all get to heaven, whoever Joseph ain't going to be. See, I wasn't called to sing. Amen. <laughs> Then you can about ask somebody else, which was the group I came out of, and they said, well, is it God's will to heal me? And they'll say, well, we don't know. It could be. It might be. I don't know. You know, God throws the dice. You know, if it comes up seven, then you're good. If snake eyes, you're dead. <laughs> that's the way they act, you know. But see, that's what the Bible calls the traditions of men that make the word of God not effective. Paul says that NIV, and I think it's in around first or second, first or is it first Corinthians around the second or third chapter? In the NIV, it says it empties the cross of its power. Empties the cross of its power. Now let's think about this. Matthew six. This is something we've been praying ever since we was a kid. Now, we just saw the will of God in heaven, right? Our Father, Matthew 6, 9 through 10. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth. Thy will be done in earth just like it is in heaven. Pray, thy will be done on earth just like it is in heaven. Is that what it says? So what was God's will in heaven? No pain, no sorrow, no death, no curse, no sickness, no disease. That was the way it says, Thy will be done on earth just like it is in heaven. The Bible tells us that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, doesn't it? We've talked all right. It says, Malachi 3, 6, I'm the Lord, I change not. One more scripture. Can I get one more? We can do it, Deuteronomy. I love this one. Deuteronomy, I believe I gave it to y'all. Deuteronomy chapter 11. Did I give y'all that one? Oh, good. Oh, boy. I got to find it, though. Hold on. What was it? 11? Okay, here we go. 11, 18. Deuteronomy 11. It's a new Bible. 18. Therefore shall ye lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul, and bind them for a sign upon your hand, that they may be as frontless between your eyes. Now this is actually the next scripture is how God taught me to be a father. And ye shall teach them to, uh, to your children, speaking of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt write them upon the doorpost of thine house and upon thy gates." That your, notice this, that your days may be multiplied. The, you being a doer of the word of God, according to this, says that you can prolong your day. You can lengthen your days in, in, with, with the word of God. Notice this, that your days may be multiplied, and the days of your children be multiplied, in the land which the Lord swore unto your fathers to give them, as the days of heaven upon the earth. Is that what that just said? Is that the Bible? So this tells me that if a person will become a doer of the word of God and not a hearer only, that your days will be multiplied and that the days of your children will be multiplied in the land which the Lord swore unto your fathers to give them as the days of heaven upon the earth. Somebody says, well, that was just for the Jews. <laughs> yes, glory to God, it was. It was just for the Jews. And the Bible tells me in Romans that I'm more Jew than the children of Israel, glory to God, than the Israel of God. Because, I'm not, because we were not circumcised by the flesh. We were circumcised in the spirit, by the spirit of the living God. And it calls us more Jews than, the, than, than, than Israel of God. Somebody give the Lord a shout, glory to God. It says, as the days of heaven 
upon the earth. The Lord says, if you'll be a doer of the word of God, you can have some of the days of heaven upon the earth. You can be free of the curse of sickness. You can be free of the curse of poverty and spiritual death. You can be free of sorrow and pain. How? By being a doer of the word of God. Does that mean you're never going to have it? I didn't say that. But when you when it comes against you, you overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. Glory to God. Somebody give the Lord a shout. You know, we're all saying, when we all get to heaven, when we all rejoice in heaven, but you know you could rejoice right now. You don't have to wait to get to heaven. You know, that's all true when we sing about that. But you can rejoice and enjoy some of the blessings of heaven right now. Listen to me. Listen to me. Say, I'm listening. Because I'm trying to find a place to close here. All right. <laughs> Don't relegate all the blessings of God to after you get to heaven. Amen. See, there are some benefits that are only good for here and now. Psalms 103. You know, years ago, Satan tried to kill me. Twice, as a matter of fact, in a five-year period. I was preaching the gospel, and I began to get short-winded. And so I went to the doctor. They rushed me to the hospital from the doctor's office and said, told my wife that his, he has blood clots in his lungs. And my wife said, how many? One or two? She said, he said, too many to count. And you see what? people don't know is that those blood clots go through your heart before they get to your lungs. But see, I was under the anointing of God when it happened. And I blew them out. <laughs> it happened a second time five years later. But what happened was, you know, I'll never forget, you know, uh, this is not how to win friends and in in influence people if you're a nurse. But I remember I was in, I was in the, you know, they put me in a bed, you know, and the nurse come in there and said, now, Dr. McCann, don't you move much. Don't get out of this bed because uh, if you do, a blood clot may break loose and you'll be dead in 30 seconds. I said, thank you, sister, <laughs> for that encouragement. But you know what I had to do? The same thing that you have to do. I had to find me a promise, a rhema. You know, I got all kinds of promises, but I needed a rhema. A now word. So I said, baby girl, my wife said, go home and get my, my Bible and bring me my tapes. Because, see, I know I wasn't going to die because I wasn't through with my tour. You understand? I, I'm in my tour duty right now. No one going to die. So, anyways, Psalms 103, listen to me. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Now, listen. And forget not all of his what? Benefits. Who heals all thy iniquities. <laughs> heals some of your iniquities. All your iniquities. Then here's where it jumped out at me. This was my word. And delivers your life from destruction. <laughs> Glory to God. I said, it's done. I'm out of here. So that your youth is... And then it says, now listen to this. Now listen to this. Lord gave me something on this the other day. Well, a few weeks ago. And fills your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. And I thought, glory to God. Butter, beans, and cornbread. Fill your mouth with good things. Tomatoes. I mean, bumper crop. I got a bumper crop of tomatoes here. I done picked, I picked some, I picked about 15, oh, no, about 10, 13 before I came over here tonight. I probably had 150 tomatoes. On them. I got more out there, man. I'm just. Down my mouth, I'll go for him, you know. But you know what? You think about that. Butter beans and cornbread and tomatoes is not going to renew your youth like the eagles. It's going to, you know, that's what it's going to do. It's going to get you big if you eat too much of it. Or didn't you know that? And he said he's, you fill your mouth with good things. What does gospel mean? Good news. You fill your mouth with the word. And you speak the word. And it will begin to renew your youth like the eagles. Somebody give the Lord a clap. Glory to God. Now notice, and here's what I was getting to. Notice it says, 
Psalms 103 says, we have benefits. Say benefits. See, there are some benefits that are only good for here and now. When you get to heaven, you can't use them. You're not going to need to be healed in heaven, or didn't you know that? Listen to me. How many gets these coupons in the mail like Burger King coupons and all this kind of stuff, you know? Well, what's down there in the corner? It gives you a little bit. It tells you an expiration date, doesn't it? Yeah. You understand there's an expiration date on, the, on coupons. They have an expiration date. And if we don't use them by a certain time, then they expire. And if we don't use these rich and precious promises now, they're going to expire. You've got a coupon called the rich and precious promise of God that says, by his stripes you're healed. Also, also Paul, you need to court my riches and glory by Christ Jesus. But the expiration date, people around holding it, not knowing what to do with it, and they look over there and it says, expiration date, when you dead. <laughs> Are you listening to me? See, there's an expiration date. If you don't use it now, you can't use it later. Some of the listen to me. Some of the temporal or the temporal blessings of God are for uh, are for this lifetime. They're not for heaven. And if we don't utilize them now, they won't. You won't be able to utilize them when you get to heaven. You're not going to need them there. That's right. <laughs> there's going to be a lot of people when they get to heaven. The Lord's going to walk over. There, you and the Lord's going to walk over to the banister of heaven, and you're going to look down, and they're going to and, and they're going to look down to earth, and God's going to show you your life, and you're going to you're going to look at him, and you're going to say, "You mean I could have done?" He's going to say, "Yeah." You mean I could have uh, had? He's going to say, "Yeah." He said, "He's going to say, but you're just too busy on Fussbook. You're just too busy on them stupid computer games. Instead of instead of putting the word first in your life and building my kingdom, you built your own kingdom." And that's why you're here sooner than you should be. Somebody say amen. amen. Now why is that? Because a lot of people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Hosea 4, 6, my people, my people, not the world, but my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Somebody say amen. amen. Glory to God. Now think about this. If you think about a day of heaven on earth, would a day of heaven be... Uh, a day without sickness and disease? Somebody say amen. See, a lot of folks will say it's God's will for me to be well in heaven, but not always on earth. Well, that's contrary to Scripture. Hebrews 13, 8 says, uh, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. We know that. James 1, 17, every good and perfect gift, uh, gift is from above. Now, notice this, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no uh, variableness, neither shadow of turning. Now, listen to me. If he never changes to any shape, form, or fashion, to any degree. Therefore, his will could never change. If it was God's will for man to be without sickness, now listen to me, without sickness and disease, remember in the garden, the original creation, if it was, now listen to me, hold on now, if it was God's will for me, for man, to be without sickness and disease in the garden, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. That would be yesterday, wouldn't it? Is that right? And when we get to heaven, we know that it is his will to be without the curse. Is that right? To be without disease, that will be forever. Is that right? Sure it is. Well, he said that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Therefore, it is God's will for me to be free of sickness and disease today He because he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. Somebody shout tonight. Amen. You know, people say, well, you know, it's God's will for me to be sick. I just know it is. And when I get to heaven, I won't be sick anymore. Now, wait a minute. I promise I'm closing. Wait a minute. You just said it was God's will for you to be sick. And you said that God never changes. So if it's God's will for you to be sick now, <laughs> then when you get to heaven... <laughs> You're going to be sick there because God never changes. As a matter of fact, you're going to be more sick because in heaven the will of God is unhindered. Now listen to me. The truth is this, is that God has always wanted us healed and always wanted us well. Somebody say amen. See, listen to me. Healing was God's idea, not man's. See, God doesn't 
change. Listen to me. God doesn't have one will for earth and one will for heaven. He never changes. God's still the same yesterday, today, and forever. Just agree with it and go on with God. Glory to God. So we are sure it is God's will to heal because of the original creation. Somebody say amen. And because of his will revealed in heaven. Glory to God. Did y'all learn something tonight? We all give the Lord a shout. Glory to God. Amen. Well, that's how you stop, isn't it? <laughs> how many of y'all believe that Brother Jim is too time conscious? Yeah, we're going to take that watch away.